Hi, I'm Elliot Tapper from the Liver Center at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. The title of my paper in Mayo Clinic Proceedings is Refining the Ammonia Hypothesis, a Physiology-Driven Approach to the Therapy of Hepatic Encephalopathy. Hepatic encephalopathy is one of the most common and important complications of cirrhosis and portal hypertension. It can present as a spectrum from subtle cognitive dysfunction to coma. Now, one of the reasons we undertook this study was to clear up some of the confusion amongst our colleagues regarding the role of ammonia in its management. Ammonia levels are frequently checked in clinical practice uh, because we think it's well known that hyperammonemia causes hepatic encephalopathy. Indeed, the so-called ammonia hypothesis of hepatic encephalopathy has been with us for decades. It turns out, however, that the clinical utility of checking an ammonia level is limited because the levels simply don't correlate with symptoms. In other words, the hypothesis is incomplete. To refine it, we set out to perform a structured review of the literature regarding the mechanisms of hyperammonemia and the pathogenesis of hepatic encephalopathy to clarify the role of ammonia in its therapy. We found that ammonia metabolism and homeostasis is a multi-organ process that involves the brain, liver, kidney, and muscle, as well as the gastrointestinal tract. In addition, and there is a critical component to inflammation, and that's precisely the reason why ammonia levels don't correlate, because inflammation is a major determinant of ammonia neurotoxicity. Beyond that, to summarize our findings further, we offer advice regarding therapy as well as its rationale. First, ammonia tends to come from glutamine metabolism by gut bacteria. To treat this, non-absorbable disaccharides like lactulose, antibiotics like rifaximin, and potentially probiotics reduce gut ammonia genesis and systemic inflammation. Second, the liver normally handles the ammonia that comes from the gut by turning it into urea. However, in the setting of cirrhosis or portosystemic shunting, that ammonia is distributed out to the tissues. An important site that handles ammonia in that setting is skeletal muscle. Unfortunately, muscle wasting is common in cirrhosis. Therefore, nutritional support is of critical importance for patients with cirrhosis. Whereas it was once thought that protein restriction could treat hepatic encephalopathy, that is not recommended because it could exacerbate muscle wasting and therefore encephalopathy. Indeed, patients with hepatic encephalopathy should receive 1.2 milligrams per kilogram of protein daily. Third, the kidney plays a major role in ammonia handling. But in states of GI bleeding, hypokalemia, or hypovolemia, it could actually exacerbate hyperammonemia, making the prevention of renal failure of paramount importance and highlighting a role for volume status checks and potassium repletion, particularly for our patients on diuretics. Finally, sedatives, which exacerbate ammonia neurotoxicity, must be avoided. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.